In this video, you'll learn how to define the typography sizing for your responsive website using fluid type scales. Let's go. Hey, hey welcome to a new Test Bus tutorial. Uh, if we're just meeting, my name is Adi Purdila. I'm a web designer, and my goal with these videos is to help you become a better web designer and developer. Now, let's talk about typography. Uh, let's say you're building a website and you've chosen the fonts. Next, you need to decide on the font sizes, but how do you do that? Where do you start? Uh, what size do you make the headings or the body text? Do you just eyeball it and settle for whatever looks good? Or uh, is there a, a simpler process? Is there kind of like a guideline that's going to get you in the right place. Well, there is actually a very simple process, uh, and that is by using type scales, or in the case of this video, fluid type scales, because we're uh, talking about responsive websites. So let me tell you more about them. But before we do that, here's a quick reminder about a website called Envato Elements. With one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to WordPress themes and plugins, web and email templates, bootstrap templates, and more. There are millions of digital assets to choose from. They have simple commercial licensing and you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now using the link in the video description. All right, now let's get back to type scales. A type or typographic scale is basically a progression of font sizes. And it's a great tool for creating balanced and harmonious font sizing for your project. I actually made an entire course on the topic of uh, type scales back in 2018. So if you want a more in-depth look at them, check out that course. Uh, you'll find the link down below. Now, in this video, I'll give you a brief definition of type scales, uh, show you how to apply one to a demo project, and also how to create fluid type scales that work perfectly with your responsive website. Ready? Let's go. As I was saying, a type scale is a progression of font sizes. And the one tool that I use every time is this one, typescale.com. It's a really simple tool. You just enter your base font size, you select your scale, and um, the tool will just give you all the sizes you need here, both in rems and pixels. A type scale is built using a base font size, which is this one, and a scale or a ratio. And it works the following way. You take the base size, you multiply it with the scale, and that's going to give you the first step. So in our case, the base font size is 1 rem multiplied by 1.25 gives us 1.25 rems. To get the next step on the scale, you take this value, you multiply it again with the uh, ratio. So 1.25 times 1.25, and that's going to give you the next one. And you just rinse and repeat this process as many times as you want to get all the font sizes you need for your project. And to demonstrate how to apply a type scale to a project, I created a very simple demo right here. It's just uh, a lot of text with some paragraphs and uh, some headings. And I just have some basic styling applied to it, like, you know, some colors, some margins, some uh, font families and stuff. So now let's uh, add some typography styling. And for this particular demo, I want to use a base font size of 20 pixels and a scale of 1.25, or as it's called, a major third. And the nice thing about this tool is that uh, besides giving us all the font sizes we need, we can also grab uh, some CSS that we can copy and paste directly in our page. Of course, I'll just remove the font family from here and a couple of other stuff from here. Let's see, we don't need this because I already applied it. I'm going to keep the paragraph h1, h2, h3. I'm going to keep these. 
And then H4, I also have a class of lead here, and I'm gonna delete these. And I'm also gonna remove this font weight because we don't need it. So just like that, we applied a type scale to our demo project. We set the body font size to 125%, and then incrementally we defined the sizes for the headings, as you can see here. And the result is this. Very, very simple. Now, while this approach is simple, it does have its shortcomings. And the main one is that the scale stays the same on smaller screens. So if I resize this, you can see that no font size changes. It stays exactly the same regardless of the screen size. And for this screen size, these font sizes are way too big. Well, we could use some media queries to, uh, for example, create another scale and to swap it at certain points or to change the font sizes, but that can result in some undesirable behaviors. And this is where fluid type scales are really powerful. So fluid type scales, they're just like a regular type scale, but the technique we'll be using involves changing the base font size. So the ratio is gonna be the same, but by changing the base font size, the other font sizes will be changed as well. Because in a type scale, all the steps are based on the, well, base font size. The technique I'm about to show you now is based on the amazing work of Mike Rithmuller, apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly, and Tim Brown. So Mike wrote this uh, awesome article it's called Precise Control Over Responsive Typography. And he's using calc and viewport units. And combined with Tim's molten leading technique or fluid line height, we can do the following. We can create a type scale where between certain breakpoints, we change the base font size. By doing that, each step in the type scale will change as well. And that is really an amazing technique. Now, to set this up for you so you can understand better what's going on, uh, we're uh, mainly gonna start from uh, the same CSS, but I'm gonna delete uh, this typography thing and I'm just gonna quickly add some JavaScript. And this JavaScript, I won't go over the, the code here too much. It has nothing to do with fluid type scales and the way they work. It's simply for presentation purposes. Uh, and it basically adds these pseudo elements next to the headings and paragraphs uh, that show you the font size of that element as well as the line height, okay? And it's doing for is doing that for all of the elements here. So uh, don't worry about this JavaScript, as I was saying, it's just for uh, presentation purposes. Uh, and inside the basic styling, I also added uh, some, uh, some properties for the before uh, the pseudo elements that are displayed here. So now, in order for this to, to work seamlessly, uh, we're gonna use SAS, so a preprocessor. Let me just change that right here in code pen. And the reason we're using SAS is that we want to use a variables. A more elegant solution would be to use CSS custom properties, but these are not supported in media query declarations, or at least uh, they're not supported in 2021. So just to keep things consistent, uh, we're going to use SAS. And we're going to start by defining a couple of uh, variables. First, we're gonna have some font size settings. So we're gonna define a minimum font size that's gonna be 16 pixels and a maximum font size that's gonna be 20. This will allow us to set the range of where we want our font size to be. So we don't want the font size to go lower than 16 or higher than 20. Based on that, let's add some breakpoint settings. 
we're going to have a minimum breakpoint of, let's say, 480, and a max breakpoint of, let's say, 1120. And then let's create the type scale settings. So instead of writing the type scale values manually, we can actually calculate them uh, with SAS. So I'm going to set the scale. We were using the 1.25 scale. And then we define step zero as one rem. That's our base font size. And then we'll say step minus one is step zero divided by our scale. This is for the smaller font sizes. For the bigger font sizes, we multiply by the scale. So we say step one, that's going to be step zero times scale. Step two is going to be step one times scale. Step three is step two times scale, and so on and so forth. You can just keep going with this and add as many steps as you want. So now, let's see about implementing this uh, fluid type scale to our website. We start by defining or by setting the font size of the root element to min fs, that's the minimum font size uh, variable defined in SAS, and then pixels. And as you can see here in the top left corner in the red box, uh, we're displaying the base font size. Next, I'm going to define the styles for my typographical elements like paragraph, headings, and so on. So they go something like this. And I just uh, quickly uh, pasted those in. I'm setting some margin for the paragraph, margin and line height for h1, h2, and h3. I'm setting some font weights here. And this is where we start using the variables. So on the h1, h2, h3, instead of using a fixed font size, we use the SAS variable. So step five, step four, step three, and so on. Step two is being used for the h4 and the paragraph with the class of lead, which is this one right here. Uh, step one is used for h5, step zero is used for h6, and step minus one is used for the small tag. And so far, this gives us this result. And as you can see, with the help of that JavaScript snippet that I wrote, uh, we can now see the font size and line height on all of these elements. But we can still resize this, and they're going to be the same, right? Because we haven't written the magical code just yet, the code that will make this uh, type scale into a fluid one. So let's go ahead and do that. For it, we're going to use some media queries. And it goes something like this. Media. First, we need to define the behavior or the base font size between the minimum and the maximum breakpoints. So we'll say media, min width, and we're going to say min breakpoint and then pixels and max width is going to be max breakpoint and then pixels and inside we do this root because we need to basically overwrite this declaration here font size will be equal to this formula so it's a bit of a complex formula, and it's a bit harder to read uh, because of all this uh, SAS variable um, substitution going on here. But essentially, in this formula, we're using the minimum and the maximum font sizes, as well as the minimum and maximum breakpoint, along with viewport units, right, to determine the font size. And what it does is basically it limits the font size to be a minimum of what we defined and a maximum of what we defined between, of course, these two breakpoints. What's outside of the breakpoint, we can just set it to the max width. So we can do media, min width, max BP, pixels root, we can say font size, 
groups equals max font size, like so. So now let me show you this in action. When our viewport is between the minimum and maximum breakpoints, we get a fluid font size. See here? The base font size changes based on the formula that we wrote here. And along with the base font size, all the other font sizes in our type scale change with it. See? And of course, the line height changes as well because it's uh, based on the, uh, the font size of that element. So once I get to like the minimum, see there's no resizing taking place. The font size stays the same. You can actually check out the viewport size here. So our minimum breakpoint is 480. So from 0 to 480, the, the base font size will stay the same. But after 480, that's going to begin to change, see? And it's going to keep going until it reaches its maximum font size, or the maximum that we defined, which is 20 pixels which is right about here. And once we get past that, the font size stays exactly at the maximum of 20 or what we, uh, we defined. So that's how you can create a fluid type scale. You basically change the base font size. You keep the same ratio. Uh, in, you also have to make sure that you're using viewport units in your calculations, just like we did here. And, you know, these are completely customizable. I can change uh, the range or the minimum and maximum breakpoint. I can even change the minimum and maximum font sizes. So let's say I want to go between 14 and 28 pixels, right? And that's gonna adjust accordingly. So now we can go as low as 14 pixels. and we can go as high as 28 pixels. It really depends on uh, how we want our typography to, uh, to behave. And I think this is actually a great uh, boilerplate, I guess you could call it, for um, your website. And you can copy and paste this in your own project. All you have to do is define your minimum and maximum font sizes and breakpoints you define the scale that you want to use and the value of the first step. And then uh, SAS does automatically for you. It compiles it to CSS and you're good to go. All right, time for some key takeaways. A type or typographic scale is a progression of font sizes. A fluid scale uses the same ratio, but different font sizes that are based on the body font size. It's recommended you limit the fluidity of the scale between a minimum and a maximum value. All right, and that's about it for creating fluid type scales for responsive websites. Uh, I hope uh, you found this information useful and that you plan on using it in your own projects. And Speaking of that, let us know down below uh, where you plan on using this technique and um, if you intend to make any changes to it. With that said, thank you very much for watching. I'm Adi and until next time, take care.